everyone. Today we'll be talking about communicating information in terms of a graphical presentation. It could be as cumbersome as reading and interpreting data. Because expressing uh, a, a visual message um, is more interesting and more intelligible, um, especially when you're talking about complex probabilities. And uh, tree and Venn diagrams are significant tools that can help understand this information more clearly. Let's talk about the tree diagram first. A tree diagram represents branches of a tree and those branches represent uh, frequencies and it is particularly useful when we are talking about nested frequencies or nested probabilities in a question. The following examples will uh, help you understand how a tree di diagram um, help you understand um, nested frequencies uh, which are sometimes uh, actually most of the times is presented in the form of conditional probabilities so bear with me we start with an example we have 11 balls three red and eight blue and we draw two balls one at a time uh, with replacement which means that when we pick a ball we put it back and then we pick the second ball which could be the first ball again Okay, what happens in the first draw? The first draw would be either a blue ball out of eight or it would be a red ball out of three, right? And uh, the second choice could be a blue ball again out of eight and it could be a red ball out of three, which stays the same if a red ball is picked first. So when we um, compute the probability of picking two balls, which was the aim, then we set up the direction according to the T tree diagram. Uh, when we start from here, we mean that we pick a blue ball and then we again pick a blue ball. So picking the first blue ball had probability eight and the second blue ball had probability eight. So the total probability would be 64. The next direction would be this one, where a blue ball is picked first and then a red ball is picked, which means that we um, have the probability of picking uh, a blue ball out of eight and a three ball out of three. So total, there'll be 24 combinations of BR. And similarly, there'll be 24 combinations if we pick a red ball first and then a blue ball. Um, so the combination would be RB this time, but the probability would again be 24. And the last choice would be when a blue ball, when a red ball is followed by a red ball. So the red ball is picked both of the times. So the probability would be 9 uh, for an RR combination, which is here. And we can see that the total uh, probabilities would be 64 plus 24 plus 24 plus 9 which is 121 which should have been the case. Now we answer some questions regarding the diagram we just discussed. Um, in part A we want to list the 24 BR outcomes which means that we want to see something like B1R1, B1R2, B1R3 or uh, at some point since there are eight blue and three red balls you could have something like uh, B, 7, R, 3, and uh, so on. In part B, we use the tree diagram to uh, calculate probability of the RR combination. And um, if you remember, uh, we, the RR combination would be going this way. 3R times 3R and the probability is 9 RR. And this is out of the total probability, which is 121. So 9 out of 121. In part D, we use the tree diagram to calculate the probability when R comes on the first row and B comes on the second row. And this word and in statistics, you know, refers to the intersection, the commonality of the two sides. So in the first side, we have R on the first row. And if we consider all the possible combinations, then they will be either RR or RB. While if B is on the second row, the combinations would be either a BB or an RB. 
So the common thing between the two is RB. So we want the probability of the RB combination and RB combination would be this way, then this way. So three times eight, which is 24. So this is 24 out of 121. In part E, we use the tree diagram to calculate the probability that R appears on the second draw, given that B has already appeared in the first draw. So we have to consider B in the first draw first. Now, if B is chosen in the first draw, then there are two possibilities. Either it is 64 BB or it is 624BR. If we add them, 64 plus 24, that would be 80. And out of that, we are interested when R appears on the second row. We are interested here, which gives us the probability 24. So it is 24 by 80, which can be simplified as uh, dividing by the highest factor, which is 8. So 3 out of 10. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now we are considering another very interesting case. We again have um, 11 marbles uh, this time. 3 red and 8 blue as before. We draw 2 marbles, one at a time, but this time without replacement. Which means that when we, once we pick a marble, we don't put it back before we pick the second marble. Okay. What does the tree diagram say in this case? So we see that in the first draw, uh, there's a chance of picking a blue marble, which is eight out of 11 as before. And there's a chance of picking a red marble, which is again, a three out of 11 as before. Now the second draw has uh, one less marble. So because we are not replacing the previous one. So if uh, the first marble was a blue one, uh, in this case, the second marble, if it is a blue, will be chosen out of seven blue marbles, and overall uh, the number of marbles would be uh, would be left as ten. So the probability of picking a blue marble again would be seven out of ten. And if we pick a red marble for the second time, then uh, no red marble has been chosen before uh, in this case. So the red marble will be chosen out of three, while the total number of marbles left are 10. So three out of 10. In the third case, we start by picking a red marble. So um, the second marble, if it's blue, will be chosen from all eight marbles, um, and the remaining marbles will be 10, so the probability would be eight out of 10. And if we choose the red marble again, then it will be chosen out of the remaining two marbles and out of the total remaining 10 marbles. So two out of 10. In this way, the probability of uh, drawing two marbles would be according to tree diagram and according to the directions we pick. So in this direction, you have eight times seven, which is 56 out of 11 times 10, which is 110. 10. And the direction when we choose a B and then an R would give us 8 times 3, 24 out of 110. And the direction when we pick an R followed by a blue marble would give us um, 3 times 8, which is again 24 out of 10. And the last one uh, choice would be that both of the marbles picked are red, uh, which is an RR combination and the probability uh, of this combination would be 3 times 2, which is 6 out of 110. And now we answer some questions as before. Now we will answer some questions as before. Part A asks for the probability of the combination RR. So a red marble is chosen after another uh, red marble and we know uh, that this would be the case uh, when we are moving in this direction. So the probability is 
6 out out of 10. We have discussed it before. 6 out of 110, sorry. In part B, fill in the blanks. We want the probability of an RB or BR combination. And we know that in statistics, the word or refers to the union, which means that the individual probabilities of RB and BR would be added, which you can see over here. And uh, the probability of RB have, uh, has already been uh, calculated at 3 over 11 times 8 over 11 because in RB, we will be moving in uh, this direction first and then in this direction. So uh, that comes 3 by 11 times 8 on 10. However, when we consider the choice of BR, then we are moving the other way around. So we are moving to, towards B first and then towards R in the tree diagram. Um, and that, uh, although it again comes out to be 24 out of 110, but still um, the, the, the factors that are multiplied are different. So the first factor is 8 out of 11. And the second factor is 3 out of 11, 3 out of 10. Am I right? And the answer would be 48 out of 110, which you can um, obviously compute. In part C, we find the probability of getting a second R. Um, given that uh, the, the B, a, B is coming on the first choice. So there's a blue marble chosen first, uh, which means we are um, considering this case. And then we are going towards uh, the red marble, but since there's a condition, we have to first consider all the cases when B is chosen in the first case. Now, when B is chosen in the first case, then the outcome would be either 56 on 110 or 24 on 110. So together, the outcome would be 80 out of 110. And out of that, we have to choose where R is coming on the second, which is here. So 24 out of 110 divided by 80 out of 110 and that turns out to be 24 out of 80 and you can obviously simplify that um, dividing by probably uh, highest factor the 8 uh, so 3 out of 10 which is shown here in part D uh, you fill in the blanks uh, by finding the probability that R comes on the first and B on the second. Now, this is the AND case. And we know um, that the simplest way would be just to find the combinations when R comes on the first choice, which could be either RR or RB. And B comes on the second choice would be either BB or RB. So what is common between them? That is RB. And that's what we mean by N, we mean intersection. So RB, uh, we know is here, 3 out of 10, 3 out of 11 times 8 out of 10, which is 24 out of 110. Am I right here? I hope I am. The third example is uh, about the set of cards. And we know that there are 50, 52 cards in a deck with 12 face cards, the king, the queen, um, and the jack times four. And there are uh, 40 cards left, which are non-face cards. We draw two cards, one at a time, without replacement. So it is another example of the case when we don't replace the first pick. The tree diagram, as before, shows you uh, the first and the second draw uh, and the first draw uh, would be um, to pick either a face card or a non-face card and since there are 12 face cards so the first probability or the first draw um, has a probability of 12 out of 52 for being a face card and if um, the choice turns out to be a non-face card, then there are 40 non-face cards. So the choice, uh, the probability would be 40 out of 52. 
and then we move on to the second pig without replacing the first pig. So if we are not replacing, then the remaining face cards are 11 out of the remaining 51 cards. So it's simple, 11 out of 51. And um, if the choice, second choice is a non-face card after a face card, then the choice would be out of all 40 non-face cards while the remaining cards are 51. So the probability would be 40 out of 51. While um, if we pick the non-face card first, then the probability of uh, picking a face card would be from out, out of all 12 face cards. So 12 out of 51. And if it's another non-face card, then of course uh, there are 39 remaining out of the 51 uh, remaining cards altogether. And so you can see that the probability of uh, picking a face card followed by a face card, another face card, would be 12 times 11, which is 132 out of 52 times 51, which is 2652. And similarly, you can compute um, all other probabilities and, uh, and verify that the amount written is correct. We move on to answering questions now. So we now answer questions. In part A, we find uh, the probability of, a, of an FF case or an NF case, which means that we want a combination of both cards to be face cards, which is this case. Or we want the probability of an NF case, which is this case. So the probability could be um, either 132 out of 2652 or it could be 480 out of 2652 and we know that uh, in statistics um, the word or um, when expanded turns out to be the summation of individual probabilities so probability of ff plus probability of nf so this would be 132 plus 480 divided by 2652 and I'll leave it to you to compute it. In part B, we find the probability that uh, a face card is chosen given that uh, a non-face card has been chosen in the first draw. So we consider the first draw when a non-face card is chosen which is this one. Now, when a non-face card is chosen, then there are two possibilities. Either the combination would be a 480 or 1560. So we add them and uh, out of that, we want the probability when um, the second choice is a face card, which is this. So we are interested in 480 divided by 480 plus 1560 and I leave it to you to compute it. In part C we find the probability uh, of at most one face card. Now what do we mean by at most one face card? It means either one face card or no face card. So what could be the possible cases in this case? So it could be either, either uh, a one face card which is the probability with fn or with nf or no face card which means nn both the cards are non face cards and we find uh, it could be either of the case so again this is the case when there could be uh, an fn combination or so there is an or here there could be NF combination or there could be NN combination. So when we look at their probabilities, they will be, of course, they will be added as before. Now the probability of the FN combination is uh, this one. So 480. I will add the denominator later. And then the probability of NF combination, which is here, again 480. 
and then the probability of an n combination which is 1560 whole divided by 2652 and you can compute that and in part d we find the probability of choosing at least one face card now when we talk about at least one face card then what are the possibilities either one face card or two face cards so there should be no combination of no face card which means n n combination is not going to be here it would be either the f n combination or the n f con combination or the f f combination and we are adding all these probabilities So again, a 480 plus a 480, but the last choice would be the probability of choosing both face cards, which is 132. Whole divided by 2652. And I'll add it to to compute it. Am I making sense here? Now the next case is um, actually an exercise for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you have uh, four tabby and five black kittens. So you have to um, find the total number of kittens and then select two kittens one at a time without replacement and um, go on with the tree diagram which is provided to you and look at the first row, look at the second row and then find the uh, total probability of picking two kittens with all possible combinations. Please go ahead. Now to answer questions, in this case you are given multiple choices for part A and B um, and you can choose the right choice according to your tree diagram. Um, in part C, you have to find the probability that a tabby is chosen as the second kitten when a black kitten was chosen in the first place. So uh, you need to write it mathematically first. So you have to find the probability that a tabby is chosen in the second case and you always write the second case first. Given that a black kitten was chosen in the first case. And then you go ahead. Um, in part D, we uh, find the probability of choosing two kittens of the same color. Now this means that you have to um, find the combination where the two kittens have the same color and it is not a rocket science. You can, you know that it is simply the probability of having um, either um, a black kitten both times or a tabby kitten both times because you have to have the same color. And then you uh, apply the basic formula of uh, representing um, the OR choice in statistics. And I, I'm sure you remember that. Please go ahead. Now there's a quiz for you. So it's a bit harder than an exercise. You are not given any numbers. You are not given the tree diagram. You have to do everything from scratch. So what should be the strategy is that you start reading the phrase. So consider a box with five red balls and four yellow balls and just um, mark all the numbers. So five red balls and four yellow balls. Two balls are drawn from the box without replacement. So underline all the important text as well. Find the probability that one ball of each color is selected. So this is the requirement. One ball of each color is selected. So I leave it to you. Make the tree diagram um, and then the first draw and the second draw, all the probabilities and then answer the questions. I hope you can do that. And now we talk about another way of expressing data, which is Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are um, an easier way of handling data when you have more than one sets. It's easier um, to have uh, intersections and omissions. Um, and particularly um, when you are considering only uh, subsets of the whole set and not the whole set as at all. 
um, like in the tree diagram where uh, you uh, considered all possible choices but when diagrams are useful when you are not taking all possible choices and there are some leftovers or some outliers that also need to be considered um, in the data and that helps making decisions so let's go ahead and see how Venn diagrams work in example one we consider an experiment that has 12 outcomes and each out outcome is numbered uh, from 1 to 12 um, and each outcome has an equal chance of occurring we consider two sets a and b of these outcomes where the set a has uh, outcomes 1 to 6 and b has outcomes 6 to 9 then you can see that um, a and b uh, is simply the intersection which is the number six and a or b um, from the basic theory of sets you know is the union of both a and b and it contains all the elements from one to nine now if we express this in um, in a venn diagram then uh, we make two ovals one for a and one for b and we put all um, the outcomes of a into the oval a and all outcomes of b in the oval B, and we see that 6 is their common element so you can see uh, the area containing 6 in both the sets A and B and we also see that the outcomes 10, 11 and 12 they are not including any set so they are called outliers. Now we consider an example where we find some answers to some questions. So we are considering an experiment uh, that has outcomes as colors. And these colors start from black, white, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Each outcome has an equal chance of occurring. And uh, let even see uh, would be that the outcomes are white, blue, and purple. So that is one set of outcomes. And there's an event P when the outcomes are red, yellow, or blue. That's the second set of outcomes. And we see that uh, the intersection of C and P is just blue. Am I right? And the union of C and P, which we call C or P, contains all the elements in C and in P. Is that correct also? Yes, it is correct, but the blue is uh, written twice, so we can't remove that. We only need to write it once. Now, the first choice is uh, that the colors white, purple, blue, red, yellow are in the union. And blue is in the intersection. And orange, black, and green are outliers. Am I right here? Okay. Let me choose from the colors which are not in any set. So black, it is not anywhere. White is yes, there. Red is in P. Orange is nowhere. Yellow is in P. Green is nowhere. Blue is in C and P and purple is in C. So black, orange and green. Yes, these are the right colors that are outliers. So the first choice seems to be the correct choice. However, we would look at um, other choices to see why they are not correct. It is as important as finding the right choice. Um, in the second choice, which is on the right side, um, I'm marking it cross um, and then we see why is it cross uh, and you can clearly see that there is nothing in the intersection so that's why it can't be the choice in the third choice on the left which has to be the wrong choice uh, we see that uh, C has red yellow and blue and P has white purple and blue which is the wrong uh, combination of sets uh, because the colors in C are actually in P and the colors in P are actually in C. And the last choice, which is obvious, is lacking the outliers. So this is not the right choice. So we made the first choice as the right choice. Okay, in the third example, 
they are flipping two fair coins. And the flipping of two fair coins means that the coins are exactly alike and have no damage. Let A be um, that the outcome is a tail on the first coin for every each of the two coins, and B be the outcome that, they are, that there's a tail on uh, the second coin, not on the first coin. Then uh, the outcome A has the possibilities TT and TH. Am I right? Yes. And the outcome B has the possibilities uh, TT and HT. We want a T on the second choice. So this is also correct. So A and B would have the intersection, which is TT. And A or B will have all possible choices. Now, have we included all possible choices? We have not. So there's one choice which is not in any, any of the sets. And uh, that we can see in the Venn diagram that HH is not included in any of the sets and TT is the common element um, of A and B and A and B are there. Now we move on to a little bit harder example. Um, which says that 40% of the students at a local college belong to a club and 50% work part-time. Now, this first sentence of the example is giving us information about two categories of students. Either they go to the club, we call it C, or they work part-time, we call it PT. Now, there's no uh, connection between these two things other than what is given in the example. So, um, and we see that 5% uh, of the students work part-time and belong to a club. So this is an intersection case. And we draw a Venn diagram showing the relationships. So if C is um, the number of students who belong to the club, uh, then their percentage is 40%. And PT represents uh, students working part-time, then they are 50%. And 5% work part-time and belong to the club. So 5% is coming in the intersection. Now, what is the total of um, percentages in C and PT? Is that 100%? We have to work on that. Now we know that if we add 40 plus 5 plus 50, then it will include 5% choice. So we have to add them and then uh, subtract 5% once. So 50 plus 40 is 90 and then 95 minus 5 altogether, this is 90%. How much is left? 10%. So 10% students neither um, go to the club nor they work part time. Does that make sense? And now we answer the questions. Um, and just uh, for a reminder, um, we just enter the figures in the Venn diagram just to uh, keep a record in our mind. So uh, students going to the club were 40%. Um, going to the um, part-time work was 50%. And uh, those they were doing both of things were five percent and ten percent were outliers so the probability uh, the first thing that the student belongs to a club is uh, 0 0.4 which is evident from the 40 percent it is 0 0.4 and the probability that The student works part-time is 50%, which is 0 0.5. The probability that the student belongs to a club and works part-time is 5%, which is 0 0.5. And the probability that the student belongs to a club, given that the student works part-time, um, which is probability of C given PT, is um, uh, we know that uh, when we consider 
all the possibilities of working part-time then we uh, place it in the denominator and then we find the choice which is the intersection of um, C and PT and we place it in the numerator so it turns out to be 5% divided by 50% which turns out to be 0 0.1 and lastly we find the probability that the student belongs to a club or works part-time which is probability of C or PT and we know that this is the union thing and um, for this we add the probabilities the individual ones uh, probability of working in club and probability of working part-time um, sorry going to club and working part-time and since we know that these um, two are not totally independent and there are some students that go to the club and work part-time um, and if you remember when we um, computed the outliers we subtracted the common element once um, out of the sum uh, we have to do that again so we compute the total probabilities here and then subtract the probability of the intersection once to get the right answer and so that uh, the intersection is not counted twice We now have an exercise for you, uh, so please read the expression carefully. Uh, you have 50% of the workers at a factory um, who work a second job. So there's percentage given and a category is given. And then there's a second percentage, 25% is given for a second category that their spouse work. Please read the whole expression carefully, find the intersections, find the unions, and then match this information with the correct Venn diagram. And these are the remaining four choices of the question on the previous slide. Now we look at a little bit harder example and we uh, do it together. It says that uh, uh, there is some information first. So a person with type O blood and a negative RH factor can donate blood to any person with any blood group type. So uh, the, there are two categories having the type O blood and having the RH factor negative which is shown in the Venn diagrams uh, by uh, the letter O and the letter RH negative. 4% of African Americans have type O blood and a negative RH factor. So they are appearing in the intersection. 5 to 10% have the RH negative factor. Now don't be scared of the range given to you. We'll sort it out. And 51% have type O blood. So with this information, we answer some questions. From the Venn diagram, we see that um, people having blood group O are 51%. And um, those who have the RH negative factor are 5 to 10%. Now, obviously, uh, this range wouldn't work um, for computation, so we have to find an average of that. So the average of 5 to 10 is 7.5, so this is 7.5%. And um, the intersection is 4%. So in part A, when we find the probability of uh, people having blood group O, it is simply 0.51. And that of uh, R would be uh, 0 0.075, being 7.5%. And the intersection would be 4%, so 0.04. And the union would be the sum of 51 and 7.5 after subtracting 4 once because that's already included in 51%. So 51 uh, plus um, 7.5 is 58.5. Uh, so let's write here first 57.5 is 58.5. So in percentage and so this becomes 0 0.585 <coughs> excuse me in part e in the venn diagram describe the overlapping area using a complete sentence and um, 
obviously when you describe the overlapping area using a complete sentence then it should say that uh, the overlapping area represents the intersection of uh, people who have the blood group o and rh vector negative uh, or could, it could be it could be any similar sentence in part f in the venn diagram describe the area in the rectangle but outside both the circle and the oval using a complete sentence so people who are outliers um, they are between 39 and 44 percent and the average of 39 and um, 44 percent would be 41 percent 41.5 so um, this means that 41.5% 41 of the people um, have neither the blood group O nor the RH negative factor. Now there's another exercise for you uh, to do it yourself. Um, so I just read the phrase uh, carefully and mark all the information and important elements in the sentences and then you have multiple choices to pick a choice from so please go ahead these are the remaining choices and in part b and c uh, you just have to answer the questions and don't worry about the windows in front of you And then there's the last question uh, where you find uh, the case where customers buy only compact discs. So that's all for today um, for tree and bend diagrams. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and if you did, please subscribe to the channel and share it. Thank you. Our next topic would be discrete random variables. And with that, we'll be able to talk about discrete probability distributions as you might have guessed so bear with me and I'll be getting back to you very soon